We've never seen a scooter cause more excitement or more disappointment than the NAMI Burn E Viper. <coughs> and after the hype is over, and after we sorted out some shipping damage and a little initial setup, it's hands down my favorite scooter that I've ever ridden. Mine too. And we're not alone. Now, we're pretty sure they're gonna sort out the shipping issue, so let's talk about the scooter. This is the ESG first look at the NAMI Viper. The most impressive thing about the NAMI Viper is the suspension. We've never tested a scooter that had adjustable hydraulic damping before, and it's almost everything we had hoped for. Out of the box, it's pretty good, but when you let off the throttle at high speed, it could get a little wobbly. After adding two turns to the front spring, taking one turn out of the rear spring, and setting the dampers at 15 and a half out of 16 clicks, the suspension is amazingly good, and the off-throttle wobble is essentially gone. Now we're gonna get a little bit of heat for this one, but we absolutely love the throttle on the Viper. Yes, it has kind of a ridiculous amount of dead space at the beginning of the throttle, but what makes this scooter great is it's one of the few scooters that you can ride comfortably at four miles an hour and then mash the throttle and instantly do this. Anchoring your thumb and modulating the throttle like this gives you excellent control and prevents accidental throttle over bumps. Using this technique, it's my second favorite throttle ever next to the prototype Apollo Ludo Phantom. After a little tweaking and adjusting to sort out some damage from shipping, the nut hydraulic brakes feel amazing. At the default setting, regenerative braking is detectable, but not annoying. If you do want to change the performance, the Viper's got five different performance settings, four of which you can fully customize. It's kind of like having a car with eight-way adjustable seats. You need presets. For example, the Viper lets you separately adjust how much maximum power comes out of each wheel and how hard that power hits at each wheel when you hit the throttle. For me, I would use one preset for carving corners, another for maybe drag racing, and maybe a third for letting a friend ride it for the first time. All of the modes and settings are accessed using the gorgeous color display, which is feature packed, but actually much smaller than we thought it would be, and definitely not as bright as we'd like for riding in sunlight. While the display is smaller than it looked in photos, the deck turned out to be much larger than we thought, but it really comes in handy for helping you keep your balance when you're under hard acceleration or hard braking. The charging ports are perfectly placed for not interfering with your riding, but I would definitely seal off the backsides with black silicone to protect them from rain. So once we got past a little tweaking and tuning, we found the overall build quality is very, very good. Ride quality feels vehicle grade, exceptionally smooth, and very solid. Have you ever had a best friend who had some off-putting quirks when you met him, but ended up being one of the most awesome humans you ever met? Well, that's our friend, Bernie. We'll have more details when the full review comes out, but in the meantime, Chuck and I are both gonna be calling dibs on this Viper.